Hey everyone, it's me, Corey Summers, your local Los Angeles realtor and the vice president of the Tulip Lake Chamber. And I am here at station 86, Fire Station 86, with these wonderful gentlemen. We are going to take a walk through and talk about the upcoming pancake breakfast on May 11th. All of these gentlemen will be here and they are helping you when it comes to your physical needs, medical emergencies, and fire emergencies. here with the captain of fire station 86 Corey and I'm Corey so this is a lot of fun. yeah um, just wanted to get your take how long have you been over here at 86 I've actually been assigned to fire station 86 for uh, a year now okay yeah. and where were you before that uh, before that I was in the West Valley at fire station 105 in Woodland Hills so where which area do you feel uh, I definitely, I'll tell you what, the sense of community in the Toluca Lake area is incredible. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the sense of community here is, is, uh, much, uh, I'd say much more family oriented and, uh, they really take pride in this fire station in this district, um, more than any other district I've ever been assigned. And how long have you been working with the fire department? I've been with the Los Angeles City Fire Department for just over 17 years now. Oh wow, so that's saying a lot, so you've been... Kind I've been all over the place, yeah. Okay, and would you say where your favorite then? <laughs> oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Toluca Lake has been incredible. The support that I've seen over the last year has, has, is second to none. Is there anything that you find outside of the sense of community um, a little different over here? Maybe it's the type of calls you guys have or, or the needs of the station even? Um, yeah, well, you know, with just with this fire station being, uh, you know, from the early 1960s. Um, it is one of the older stations in the city. So we do tend to, um, you know, have other needs that other stations may not have. Uh, and, and we're tasked with maintaining the station and, and the upkeep. So um, the members here uh, have really put their heart and soul into keeping this station uh, at, you know, an operating level that's second to none. And, and uh, uh, we really take pride in the station because the community take pride, takes pride in us, and we want to make sure that uh, that we are a symbol of the community. Um, and so, yeah. So I would say uh, maintenance. Um, uh, we've talked about gym equipment. Uh, members here really try to stay in shape, exercise all the time, because we want to be in the best shape we can to come help citizens if they need. You know. right. And one of the things that I noticed too, and everybody stay because we're gonna get a whole little tour is that I've been to fire stations since I was there and very clean yes very clean. yes so as I stated uh, the members here take a lot of pride in their fire station and it reflects on the community this is a an, an extremely um, uh, well taken care of community and you see a lot of pride and ownership around yeah. here um, and that's the members here have a lot of pride and ownership in this fire station thanks to the community love to hear that. We look forward to seeing you on May 11th. Great, as do we. Are you going to be cooking any pancakes for people? I will be. I will personally <laughs> be here cooking pancakes. We want to serve you, so <laughs> you don't really have to cook. He's cooking tonight's shift. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I look, I look forward to it. It's going to be a great event. You know, when you mention that there's a lot of pride of ownership here, I don't think people really stop to think about, well, who cleans the fire station? You guys basically do all the maintenance, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, we obviously have uh, general services that works for the city. They come and do some of the heavier maintenance issues. But on a daily basis, uh, the members here, because we live here 24-7, um, somebody is here 365 days a year on all the holidays. Um, so our members are, are really making sure that this fire station runs 24-7, right? And all the maintenance and everything. So, so we are taking care of everything. We clean. Uh, we shop and cook. Um, everything is done here at the fire station. So. And how does the cooking work? Is there like one person that's the chef that everyone likes their cooking so they cook all the time or do you guys like I will, I will tell you, um, we do have some cooks that are better than others. I'm not going to name names. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but um, some fire stations do have what they call a permanent cook uh, because the member is so good and they just enjoy doing it that they permanently cook. Here at Fire Station 86, uh, we take equal pride in our, our cooking abilities, okay. so we do, we have a rotation. Nice, nice. 
somehow, like, I, I, let me ask this question because I feel like whenever I think of a man cooking, I think back to when I was a kid. My dad was excellent at the barbecue. Mm -hmm. My mom cooked regular meals, but when it came summertime, he could throw down on the barbecue. So do you guys barbecue during the summer months? Uh, or we, do we do it all. Do we it do it all. all. Well, being here in California, year round we can barbecue. So that's what we enjoy. So we do a lot of barbecuing, we do a lot of smoked, uh, smoked meats, um, but we do have people that will bake dishes as well. I mean, we have it all. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no meal that I haven't seen at the fire station. And they're always very good. Nice. <laughs> so one of the things I'm asking some of you guys um, is what made you decide to become a firefighter? I think the reason might be a little different for everybody, but it seems there's a bit of a common thread. Yeah. Um, well, actually, for me personally, um, I'm a third generation firefighter in my family. Uh, my grandfather is re uh, was retired Beverly Hills Battalion Chief. My uncle is a retired captain of Ventura County. And um, I was at the age visiting my uncle, <clears throat> excuse me, at the fire station, and I just saw uh, the lifestyle that they lived, um, the, the, just the gratitude they had in, um, in helping people. Um, and it was just something that I wanted to do. I mean, I remember being five years old saying, I'm gonna be a firefighter. You know, telling my parents. So that's that's where it all came from. Okay, that's amazing. Not too many kids that at five and six years old say, "I want to be a cop. I want to be a firefighter. I want to be an Indian." Grow up to do that. So yeah, no, amazing. absolutely. I'm living. I'm living the dream. It is. It truly is great to be able to um, say I'm going to be something and then be it. Nice. <clears throat> Well, we want to thank you for your service here. Well, thank you. Because as a community in Toluca Lake, we really value that, you know, you guys put your life on the line. When we have needs, we certainly see you guys, when, especially like your medic calls. You have a, a, a segment of our population that's a little bit older. So, you know, we, it, I think whenever we see that on the street, we're like, you know, they're okay. Or is that someone we know? Well, I just want to thank you guys because without your support, um, we can't do what we do. So, um, and we truly love our job and we truly love uh, helping people. So it's just, you know, being able to get paid to do something you love and to help people is really the best, the best, best thing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I am here with Scott Lazar. You are one of the firefighters here at 86. Uh, yeah, currently I'm the, I have the distinction of being the longest tenured fireman here. Uh, firefighter. Uh, I've got uh, 20, 20 and a half years on the job and uh, that also makes me the oldest firefighter here. Um, but it's a badge I, I, I really kind of have grown to, to love. What made you decide to be a firefighter? Uh, honestly, my, uh, my father-in-law was an LA City firefighter. Um, he retired and one day I, we were out to dinner and he looked at me and said, are you ever going to get a real job and take care of my daughter? 100% that is how I started. And uh, I thought I was going to go into law enforcement. Uh, it's always been what I thought was my calling. I thought you guys running into burning buildings with just a hope. This was crazy. And when I looked into it and saw what uh, the career gives you, um, the stability to raise a family, and uh, I, I ended up going to paramedic school before I came on the job. And I thought that was a means to an end to get the job at that time in the late 90s or 2000s. That's what we were looking for. Um, and I just found that I loved it. Oh my God, it's the greatest thing ever. Like, it's amazing to me that just because I have this uniform on, we go into somebody's house, it's the worst day of their life. And um, we fix it. Like. And we nail it. We're good at it. It's awesome. I think it takes a, a special person to run into the fire versus away from the fire. Is there anything that, like, while serving in the fire department that you've really had to look at yourself and say, while I've grown in this area, or, like, that just kind of tugs at your heart when you're on the job that you're like, oh, my gosh, not this again? Um, a little bit of all that. Right, like you, you, you build a crust. You have to. There's a defensive mechanism. You have to. I can be incredibly engaging, incredibly uh, personal on calls. I we've all been through stuff. I find it's all in bounds because people just want to be heard. They want to 
They want to not be felt alone, right? Like, I've lost both of my parents, one to cancer, when we're in people's houses and that's where they're at with their family. I share those stories. They're incredibly personal, but I share them to help them get through it. In the same aspect, I can become incredibly mechanical. Here is the problem. I know the solution. Let's just work through the steps and move forward, constantly moving forward. And you kind of vacillate back and forth as to what the call needs. And as far as growth, that's what you learn. If you're here doing this job, if this is where you've been called to, you should be getting better every day. And, um, you know, the whole, you should learn something new every day. Yeah, we live it, if we're doing it right. And every day is different for you, right? Because you just never know. Oh, yeah. What that call yeah, is. I mean, there's, there's a certain Groundhog's Day to it. It's medical calls, it's fires. I've been at this station for 10 years now. So it's the same streets up and down. It's this address there. There are some people who utilize 911 an awful lot. They just, they have no other means. We are, we are their doctors, their therapists, um, a little bit of everything. Uh, so in that case, there are some of those kind of groundhogs days. Here we are again. And then you can walk in and come out shaking your head going, wow, I have not seen that before. Um, the joke on the fire department is anytime you do something for the first time, it's UO ice cream. So we'll, every now and again, you'll have somebody walk out of, the, out of an incident and go, well, we might as well stop and get it. I owe it. <laughs> That's funny. And, it, and actually, when you're talking about that, it reminds me, I broke my leg years ago playing soccer. And who came to help and get me oh, to the hospital go. was the firefighters. Like, yeah. I, I, now some, people, like, some people aren't ready for that concept, right? Like, yeah. so, so I'm, I'm a paramedic. I'm, today I'm riding on engine 86. Uh, tomorrow I might be on rescue 86. Um, we, we rotate here. There's six of us assigned here. Three of us are paramedics, two on the ambulance, one on the engine. And that model of having a paramedic on the engine helps keep us, uh, A, ultra mission flexible. So now engine 86 is not just a firefighting apparatus, it's a lifesaving. And it's my job as, as the paramedic on the engine to be that medical intervention while we're waiting for transport. Whether it's a broken ankle, a heart attack, anything in between, anything beyond. Um, I've been first on scene on the engine on a multiple car car crash where I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. You wouldn't know it if you saw me, but in my brain, it's just spinning a thousand miles. I've got to worry about this, this, and this. Get all this lined up for the next people coming in. Or it's somebody sick kid who kind of looks like my kid. Right? Those are the ones that are a little bit tough, but also, since I became a dad, those pediatric calls are now infinity easier. When I was a younger man on the job, I was lucky enough, my partner had kids, here, you deal with it. Once I had kids, I got this. Yeah. It's much easier. So again, in that category of you're always learning something, you're always bringing something in, and hopefully making it better. Amazing. Well, we look forward to seeing you on the 11th at the Pancake I will be here. Uh, we've already made arrangements. We were talking about it this morning. It's it's technically my day off, but we have a, a vacant position, so I'll probably get hired to be working. If I'm not working, I'm staying here. I'll be here, man. Here's one for you. Okay. Scott here at Station 86, Fire Department, you service Toluca Lake, North Hollywood, and Studio City. Studio City. But we also kind of go up into Universal Studios. That's LA County. We have a mutual aid agreement there. I've actually even run calls in the city of Burbank when they got kind of behind the eight ball one day. And it does say Los Angeles on the side, so I have run calls all the way up from here, all the way up into Silmar, all the way up at the end of, uh, we've gone to Eagle Rock. I mean, again, yeah, it says Los Angeles. Okay. What scares you the most about being a not being ready. Um, we train a lot, we, um, we practice a lot, we study a lot, we, we learn from the things we hopefully do right, and then we are incredibly reflective uh, when it goes wrong so that we don't do it again. Um, it's, you know, the, when the bell rings, you, you want to be at your best. Um, as our call volume has increased, that bell rings more and more and more. And sweet little Fire Station 86 here in Toluca Lake, when I got here, it was four or five, six calls a day. Now we're getting on the better part of 10, 12 calls a day. Um, on average, um, our response times gets longer as the North Hollywood stations you mentioned 
uh, they have gotten busier. They've always been super busy. We get pulled up into there. And then that leaves you know us open here. Maybe we have to double back and respond back and we're two minutes further away than we could have been, should have been. Um, and something like that happens where it's just like, man, if only, if only is what worries me the most. And uh, I had a, uh, a senior engineer when I was a second house rookie when we're rookies and we get out of the drill tower, we can do three rotations at three different stations. And one of the things he said to me uh, was, you want to be good enough in the job to keep the screams out of your dreams. And I've always, always tried to live by that. Is just let me be just good enough that at night when I put my head on the pillow, I'm not second guessing myself. I think that's a big responsibility. I can see where, where that is. I mean, we all had a situation you know, in our own lives that was yeah. somewhat emergent and maybe someone was sick or someone broke something and, and oh. we had to step in and, and get them the help that they needed. Sure, and, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, and it can be other things, right? You're traveling in a, in a foreign town and your travel plans get all messed up. You're trying to figure out how am I going to get home? I've got my family and just anything like that, anything that takes you totally out of your comfort zone. Well, that's our business model. Right. I mean, to be honest, that's, that's where I conduct business every day so it is funny my friends uh, that I've had for God, 30 years now I mean I still hang out my, my two best friends are the guys that were the groomsmen in my wedding over 25 years ago and they still at times remember the young man that they knew back then and they go you know you're still kind of funny still kind of wacky but my god when something goes wrong I'm so glad you're around you're the one I am the one how old is your child? Uh, my daughter is 16 going on, depending on the day, 25 or 5. <laughs> She's a sweetheart. She's great. Um, what does she think of dad being a firefighter? Well, so since I've been on the job so long, it's all she's ever known, right? Like my wife and I were married long before I got on the job, so she has a different, and, and she's obviously been with me the whole ride. And um, I mean, I believe, I'd like to believe she's really proud of me. It's a different life. Like she has grown up with me taking her to school on Tuesdays and being playtime daddy where it was just three of us and we bought a minivan because I was off and I would just text all the other moms and dads, hey, I'm picking up all the kids after school and we're going to the park. I'm not asking. And I would do stuff like that. And then I'd be gone for three days. And it was this weird life. Like I wasn't always home for dinner, but when I was home, I was 100% home, you know? And having friends, one of her best friends at the time, her dad was on the job with us, and uh, the other ones weren't. So it was this really weird concept that some of, the, some of the kids couldn't understand. What do you mean your dad's not here tonight? He always takes us to the park, you know? Oh, but tomorrow I'll be home and I can do all that. Um, but it does, everything has a cost, right? Everything has a, a, a win and a loss. And I've missed certain things, certain events. You know, we, have a, we can make our schedule flexible, but sometimes you've got to be where, where the boss says you've got to be. And if you're responsible, part of that is the lesson that I'm teaching my child that I've given my word and I'm committed to something, something bigger than all of us. It doesn't supersede the family, but occasionally it does rank higher that day than others. On the same note, when we've had those once in a lifetime events, like my daughter did a show one year and somehow she got the lead role coming out of the box. Well, guess who was in the front row center every night? This guy right here. She played soccer one year. I coached, I moved days around. Uh, somehow, Rob Peter to pay Paul, you know, I need a Saturday off, I'll work Mother's Day for you next Sunday, you know, kind of stuff. Yeah, I know it's my anniversary, but I'll, I'll work that day so I can coach soccer on a Saturday, type of stuff. And those are things that she'll never forget. So you've sacrificed a lot for her. Sure. Is there one thing that comes to mind that you missed, that you had to sacrifice missing because of the job that comes to mind? Um, there were some things when she was in elementary school, some, some shows that they did, just one day only type of events where she got to sing in front of the school. I would have liked to have seen that because I got to hear, I heard her practicing and I saw her spooling up for it and she was very excited. 
And it was just a day I couldn't get the day covered. Just there was not anybody that was willing to work that day for whatever reason. You know? um, did, it sounds like she's an entertainer. She's not going to become a firefighter. Uh, <laughs> no, I want, no, she does community theater now. She does high school drama and all that kind of stuff. If they can keep their drama teacher at the school, they can seem to run through them quite a bit. Um, ironically, we've talked about the military just as, you know, a form of education and skills and, and uh, just some of the different things it offers you on the backside once you do some service. And again, it's that idea of, well, something more than just you. Right? Like that's kind of a common theme in our family. My, my wife volunteered all through elementary school uh, at the school while my daughter was there. Um, I came in and was like big event daddy. Like, oh, we're, we're, we're painting all of the classrooms? Okay, I can get that day off and we'll do that. Oh, we're, we're going to Catalina for three days. Okay, they told me I was gonna be the lead parent. I didn't get a vote in the deal, but apparently I was going to Catalina that weekend. Well, you know, it makes the most sense. Yeah. You have the yeah. you know, background yeah. for an emergency. Ironically, when I was in school, I took that same trip. So it was kind of cool to, to do it some years later. Um, that that uh, if, if you're familiar with it here in the in the Southern California Catalina Island Marine Institute, I went when I was in middle school. She went when she was elementary school. So that was kind of cool. Is there anything um, that you would like to directly say to the Toluca Lake North Hollywood community members? Um, it's been an honor. It's been a privilege. It has been an absolute hoot. Um, I left the station for one year. Uh, we were kind of talking about it earlier. I did a special detail downtown on Skid Row. And that was an exciting time. There was a lot of other things that happened on that detail. Um, but when it was up and I had my chance to go anywhere in the city, at the time I lived in the harbor, which is in LA City, I could have taken a spot literally right down the street from my house. I came back to Toluca Lake. Um, I was here for five years, left for a year. I've been back for five years. and don't have any plans on going anywhere. Um, this has kind of been that community fire station. When they sold me on this life 20 plus years ago, the idea that the doorbell rings and it's some kid who wants to see the fire engine, that to a bunch of kids at the elementary school across the street, I'm Fireman Scott. They've gone on uh, to uh, uh, the middle school and some are now in high school. <laughs> um, and when they see us out at lunch, when they see us in the market, part of the community, um, I've had them come running up. That, that's my engine 86. That's Fireman Scott. Um, who else gets that? Yeah. Like, that is so cool. Well, we certainly appreciate your service and that we have you looking out for us. And I think it's very honorable to dedicate your life to serving others. And, you know, my nephew was in the Navy. Oh, Grandparents, awesome. grandfathers all did the Navy. And I, I think there's just something special about it. It's people that put their lives on the line for others. It's a different, it's a different, uh, you know, some of them say it's a different jam, whatever you want to say. Um, I would be terrible in an office. I did it for a while. I'm asking everybody, what inspired you to become a firefighter? You've been at this for a number of years, 18? 18, going on 19 this year. Okay. So what made you say, I want to be a firefighter? You know, I, uh, shoot, I was in college. Mm -hmm. I was in San Diego. I lived along some trolley tracks. I was in the start of my senior year. Um, I was working some construction. I was actually working for Wells Fargo at the time. Uh, and I was going to school. And there happened to be a trolley accident. And it was a, I uh, still remember to this day, it was a, a small compact SUV. Had a couple kids in the back. And they were all banged up. Um, I saw the fire service kind of thing. I saw them arrive on scene, take command. Uh, there was actually a uh, helicopter that showed up that flew the kids off. And something just resonated with me. I, uh, I grew up working with my hands. Um, as I said, I had a customer service background with working with the bank. And so, f you know, for me, it was a perfect match, right? I, I, I would be physically active, uh, again, working with my hands, more of that blue collar job, and then I'd have that customer service aspect of it as well. So it was a dead ringer for me. I, I, I finished 
finished school, graduated, and then I was off to the races, got my EMT license, and then the rest was history. It took about, it was maybe two to three years afterwards, uh, and I was hired here with the land. Now, Scott, if I'm not mistaken, you drive the truck? I do drive so the, position, the engine. The engine, so yes. you are the engine? Engineer, engineer, that's correct. Do you also have to deal with maintenance on the truck? Absolutely, yeah. That, uh, my role and responsibility is maintenance on the apparatus, um, drive the apparatus safely to and from the incidents, uh, as well as operate this. All these things. Uh, this the pump handle. Which right deals here, with pressure, which water. Is, that's correct. My responsibility is getting water in and getting water out safely. Um, so yes, that's what I do. It, it, it's, it's great because, as I said, I grew up. dad and my uncles were in the trades and so that was all second nature for me um, and uh, my dad was a plumber and he uh, was a mechanic as well and so grew up working on cars mm -hmm. and so this is uh, again this is kind of like a match made yeah. in heaven you know? a little bit so, of tinkering a little bit of everything yeah <laughs> absolutely so I love that aspect I love detailing vehicles and, and, and working on my own personal cars um, so yeah this this is a perfect fit for me, this is this is the best job on the car park. Well, I said this earlier. You weren't out here when I said this, but this truck, and I've seen plenty of fire trucks, is very meticulously kept. It is clean. It is sparkling. It is. That is the LA City way. Um, we have been brought up and and taught that. Um, I challenge you to find a better looking apparatus. Some of my local, you know, U.S. travels and observing different fire stations, different fire apparatus, um, bar none. Corey Summers, your local Los Angeles realtor, but I am here on behalf of the Toluca Lake Chamber of Commerce with Will, who is a firefighter here at Fire Station 86, 
in the battalion chief, Ryan, battalion chief 14, who services not just this fire station, but others throughout yes. Los Angeles, right? And the reason we're here today is to kind of talk about a couple of things. I want to ask you some questions as to why you're out there fighting fires, but also we as the chamber are doing a pancake breakfast to help raise some funds. Uh, because as many of you don't realize, fire stations are not extremely well funded when it comes to the little things, right? And so, well, this is one of the things I want to ask you. You spend a lot of time here and we were talking before. You live in Orange County, you drive all the way up here and you sleep over. Let's talk about, uh, just before we get into like the why you became a firefighter, what is it like when you're on duty? Um, so you have to manage your time and then there's a lot of projects going on in between all the incidents that would go on. So there'd be medical uh, calls or fire related calls and a lot of training. Uh, my job specifically, I assist uh, the command team, which is my battalion chief and I assist them with uh, accountability, safety, staffing, mm -hmm. and any other administrative uh, needs. And then at an incident, I'm part of the team that tracks all the resources mm -hmm. and makes communications over the radio. So day-to-day uh, -day life, it's a lot of training. Uh, you get to know your 16 members at a fire station or at fire station, you six, six members and it's yeah, you become really Very good close, friends, right? yeah. you train together. Uh, it's a lot of camaraderie involved with all that. Yeah. We were also talking, you missed this part, we were talking earlier, my grandfather was a firefighter. Oh. And so he had a call box at the house that was constantly going off. We <laughs> heard the calls in the middle of the night, the, you know, that, that was back when the, it was a box and it was super staticky. So I know you've been on for a while. What made you decide you wanted to like that's that's not an easy calling. It's not like I think as little kids we all play with the the fire trucks yes. and you know cops and robbers. But like to really say I want to be a firefighter and put my life on the line or as a long career. So I grew up in a, uh, a family where my father served for the Los Angeles Fire Department to begin with. Uh, so I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a firefighter. I'm a little unique in that concept, and I worked through our fire explorer program, which is now our cadet program. I uh, started doing that when I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Worked through that until I got hired here uh, and haven't looked back since. So it's been a long time that I've been working with the city of Los Angeles and protecting people and uh, property out there. And how long have you been a firefighter? I've been, been with the city for 16 years now. And what made you decide you wanted to do this? Uh, so a lot of camaraderie. I played sports all my life just seemed like a natural progression to still be a part of that team concept and then also be able to serve the public so that was the natural draw for me yeah. what do you find um, are the calls that come in the most like I feel like because television that had fire fighting shows you know like the 70s and 80s it was like calling to save a cat and all those kinds of things and then there would be like a big massive fire and then as television has progressed you know, we have more complex shows that show some really serious crises. What are some of the most common ones that you guys see? So I think one of the beauties of being, uh, serving for the city of Los Angeles is you never know what you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. So we can go anywhere from uh, a medical call where we're gonna go help somebody medically, or we can go to a catastrophic fire, uh, or we can go to landslides, earthquake responses. Mm -hmm. uh, you never know what you're gonna do. And we have so many, uh, such a multitude of different resources we have. Uh, Will was a helicopter pilot for the city for the fire department beforehand, uh, and he's about to make fire captain. So he's gonna go through those. Uh, we can go through all the different resources we have. We have swift water. Um, unfortunately, we've had people that fall into the river during those times, and uh, we have to be able to respond to anything. And it's uh, very complex, and there's a lot of training that goes involved uh, because some of our higher risk incidents are some of our lower frequency incidents. So we have to be ready for anything at all times. And so that the, the fact that you mentioned that really reminds me of something. I was talking with one of your guys earlier, Scott, and we were talking about how this particular station, 86, has a truck and an ambulance, and how it's everyone rotates. And when my grandfather served in the fire department, he was never an EMT. It was just strictly he worked his way from fighting to lieutenant, was never on the, the emergency you know, response truck. So like how, it, it kind of sounds like both of you, like 
your careers have been trained in that. How do you find that? Like you mentioned earlier, doing a lot of training a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, it, how well versed are you? Does that ever make you say, maybe I should look into the medical field and, and trauma in an ER room? Because yeah. you're, you're doing on site yeah. trauma, right? Yeah. So I think to answer that question, the beautiful thing about our department is, is so big. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of diverse, you know, people on our department with different backgrounds and different specialty strengths. Mm -hmm. And so you tend to uh, take an overall assessment of yourself and be like, hey, these are my gaps that I need to really work on. Mm -hmm. And then you, you kind of, you input uh, and get, uh, solicit uh, training in those areas that you can improve in and improve overall. So if I was weak in my medical uh, tactics or my, uh, my ability to give service in that area, I would work on that and then, okay, once I get better at that, then I'll work on the next thing. And so you just have the ability, that's the beautiful thing about our organization, you have so many opportunities to learn and grow. Yeah. And if someone today, because I'm, you know, I'm going to default again when I was a kid at the fire stations, and then there would always be a day that they would invite kids out to the schools to come and see the trucks. I mean, I slid down the pole, <laughs> which I wasn't supposed to. But, um, do you guys have outreach to kids, and what do you say to motivate kids to like think about this? Do you get, you know, that kind of interaction with the public, and, and what is absolutely community involvement is a huge portion of the fire department. Um, everybody sees that big red fire engine coming down the, the street and uh, you know we always wave to everybody and that's a part of it and a lot of the things that happen are we do community based uh, things like this pancake breakfast that we're going to be hosting and that what's going to happen there is that we're able to showcase what we have as far as an organization and the diverse roles that Will was talking about and then we'll be able to bring that in and be able to show people that this is something that they can do and this is something that they want if they want to do it we can further help them pursue that career path. Yeah. And what, do you have any recommendations for someone thinking about? Yeah, we have anything from uh, uh, CAPS. So if you need to uh, work on your physical training, mm -hmm. we have that program. We have the CERT program if you want to be a volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Crew 3, which is uh, brush firefighting and getting into that uh, model of uh, fighting fire for our department. Uh, there's so many different avenues to get involved, including our cadet program and all of these, uh, uh, all, all this information is on www.lafd.org. And so that would be a jumping off point for all these opportunities. Yeah. And so for someone like you, where you knew at a young age, you were able to get involved early and kind of Yeah, yeah. so we have a lot of cadet programs too. So. For our youth and we have magnet programs with some of the schools, the area schools. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for uh, young young adults and children to come out to the fire station, be part of the fire station, understand what the culture is like, uh, and really kind of start immersing themselves in a potential career path that's going to go through for them. And it's funny, you, you mentioned an interesting word, the culture. How would you summarize the culture of being a part of the fire department? Wow, the culture is... Uh, is unique. So we have 106 fire stations, mm -hmm. and each fire station on each shift has its own culture. Right. Uh, it's a great place to work. It's very uh, we have very high morale in the fire department, and a lot of camaraderie with everybody. Uh, it's an interesting place to work because we work together for 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get to see people at their highest of highs and their lowest of lows, and we get to help each other build each other up at all times. It's a it's a very unique and challenging and rewarding career. Uh, there's, there's probably nothing better than helping somebody else that you don't even know. A special moment for all, all of us is getting through our year of probation. Mm -hmm. And then we have this tradition where we get a, a fire shield mm -hmm. and to signify that you completed your probationary year. So that was a special moment. Another special moment was when, you, when I got certified as a tiller and uh, we sat around the fire and the crew uh, congratulated me and then, you know, now you're ready to go. And the tiller is that back portion that mm -hmm. people see kind of bending the turn the yeah. last, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's that was a special moment. Uh, so, I mean, there's special moments along the way, all the way, it's 16 years of special moments, so, yeah. 
And for you, being that you're you're overseeing so many fire stations, what are some of the biggest needs that you see the fire department in and of itself um, maybe needing, whether it's community relations or just in general? I think community involvement. So as we work together uh, with the community, we understand what needs you guys have so we can meet and exceed those expectations. And uh, having that collaboration together is really helpful. Like in anything that we do, if we, are able to have that communication and have the back and forth, uh, it makes everything a little better. Yeah, and I think the reality is most people don't think about the fire department until you need it, right? Until there's a fire, an emergency, you know, and we kind of take it for granted, right? Because especially in big cities, you know, the fire trucks, oh, we have to pull over to the side and there's another ambulance and yay, but it's, it's I always look at it like, we don't know whose life is, is hanging by a thread on that. On that ambulance, right? So I think that anytime someone calls 911, it's probably the worst day they've ever had. Right. Right? And we're there to help them get through that situation uh, and have a positive interaction with that and a positive outcome. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say that whatever we can do to support the community, we're always there to try to do that. And how can the community support you more? Uh, by being involved with us. Mm -hmm. So coming out to this pancake breakfast is going to be incredible. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be able to carry heavy equipment and, and... We do, yeah. So we have a super diverse workforce right now. Uh, men, women, people from all walks of life are coming together. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that diversity and the strength that we have with it, it's really incredible. Um, because like Will was talking about earlier, everybody's background uh, helps us become a stronger organization. So some of Will's uh, strengths are some of my weaknesses. So we're able to bridge the gaps together mm -hmm. and be able to keep pushing this thing forward. So, but absolutely, um, the physical fitness is a huge portion of our job. Mm -hmm. uh, the equipment that the firefighters wear on a daily basis is extremely heavy. So they need to make sure that they're ready to go at all times. Yeah. How heavy would you say that it, it feels? Are you adding another 20 pounds, 40? Well, some days it feels heavier than most, but <laughs> yeah, it's about, I would say anywhere between 30 and 50 pounds of yeah. tools and equipment and safety equipment. That's a lot. And here's my other question because, you know, again, it's been a long time since my grandfather was a firefighter. One of the things that um, we saw as he got older, right, he was around a lot of fires when he was younger. Of course, he also smoked, and I think that's kind of shifted culturally, right? It was a thing for a long time. All firefighters smoked for some weird reason, um, and that's kind of changed. But has the equipment gotten better to help you breathe better and have better quality of lung capacity and, and general health? Yeah, so a couple of things that have happened because of the uh, Everyone Goes Home Safe initiative is our PPEs got upgraded to the newest, greatest. We have extractors, which are basically commercial grade washing machines to wash all the gear. Mm -hmm. uh, the Fire Foundation has given us, gifted us like safety equipment, like our hoods uh, to, that provide an extra layer of protection. Uh, so uh, yes, it has progressed and we're always still trying to do more. That's great, because I think that's your first line of defense when you're out there, right? Like, yes. is, is how well you're protected. and. And no one wants to hear that anyone's lost their lives saving someone else. That's like Correct. probably the worst thing, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, I appreciate you guys. I look forward to seeing you on our pancake breakfast. And hopefully both your families will get to come out and enjoy as well. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hey, Toluca Lake. How are you? My name is Scott Hessing. I am assigned here at Fire Station 86. I am driver operator of Engine 86. I have been assigned here for about a year and a half. I have 18 years on with the Los Angeles Fire Department. Uh, I want to invite you to our Fire Service Day hosted by the Chamber of Commerce on Saturday, May 11th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, we're going to have many static displays, pancakes, sausage, tours of the fire station. You can come here, meet myself as well as my co-workers. Uh... <laughs> Hi, I'm Captain Corey Taylor. I'm assigned to Fire Station 86 here in Toluca Lake. I want to personally invite you to Fire Station 86 and Toluca Lake Chamber of Commerce's Pancake Breakfast on May 11th, 2024, day before Mother's Day. We'll see you there.